Hey everybody, we are currently at Swamp Fest. That's not Swamp Fest. Swamp Fest is over here with Stu Johnson. Gonna ask him a couple questions here about video editing, so uh, hope you enjoy it. When did you start doing video in BMX? Uh, I mean, I, I probably picked up a camera a few times fresh out of high school. I took photography in high school for a couple years. So, you know, we had friends whose parents had video cameras and we'd go riding and all my other friends were really terrible about keeping someone in the frame and I could kind of do it since I had already taken photography. So I just became the guy that they all handed the camera to. And so that's why I kind of started just like doing it for fun. But 95 would have been like the first time I did like a real project, like me and Mike Tag did 12, video 1201 and it actually sold a little bit, so. So like what, making videos is, hard work I mean it is it is time consuming mm -hmm. and it's hard so like what about that process makes you like want to do it and yeah keep doing it, it. It, it's a tough one because really the, the hardest part is like you want to ride in the session and then to have to like put your bike down and pick up the camera is like it's pretty difficult you know it takes some self-discipline but really the I think the motivating factor was just like at that point in time you know the early 90s there weren't a lot of people making videos and there definitely weren't people putting me and my friends in videos so we just like kind of wanted to make our own video you know put like the music we like to it just something to watch later and be like motivated or even just like just a keepsake of you know trying to remember oh we got to go ride we got we went to took a trip to this person's house and instead of taking some photos to remember the trip by we just shoot some video for a while or whatever yeah right so Back whenever you first started doing it, I guess you could do, consider like for fun and professionally the so sides of things. Was it like whenever you were filming at a session or you're filming for a video, was it like the person is like, all right, I want to do this and we're going to film this? Or was it like you're just filming what was happening at the yeah, time? We were just filming what was happening, you know? I mean, especially that, that era, that like early 90s. You know, late 80s, uh, we didn't have a camera in late 80s, but late 80s, early 90s, it was just a lot of people hucking and hoping and just like, you know, the sport was, you know, whatever, dead. But it's like, the progression of the riding was just like going through the roof, you know? So it was kind of like entertainment value. You knew that like, one of your friends was gonna try something wild and they probably were a little more, you know, uh, more more motivated to do it if there was a camera around, you know, so that they could just kind of see the wildness, but. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, I don't know if it's Kodak Courage or whatever, but you know. Kind of like for the sake of documenting it <laughs> yeah, and yeah. capturing. So there's been like a distinct shift in like, whenever people are filming something for Instagram, it's like, it's not their buddy filming whatever's happening. It's like, hey, I want to do this. And like, I think it's kind of interesting to think about that shift from we're filming just because we're filming what's happening to like, all right, I want to film this. And it's like, even very deliberate. Yeah it's, yeah, it's an interesting concept to think about in that and how, how readily available yeah. it is these days. Like, how hard was it to actually video back whenever you are starting? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, if you went out street riding, you never took the camera with you. You'd, you know, a big-ass camera, and it was whatever, like, someone's parents, and they probably didn't even want you... They probably didn't even want you using it in the first place, you know? But, yeah, I mean, it was like... it was You had to want to do it. It's a big-ass camera, and, like... You know, there weren't that many cameras around. So it was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna ask my parents if I can borrow this camera, you know? So it was like, yeah, it was like a process. You didn't just always have something in your pocket that you could film with. Right. So so what was editing like then? Oh man, it was miserable. Yeah, like, tapes, like give whoever like, doesn't know about physical editing an, a slice into it. <laughs> well, I mean, just, you know, you have these analog tapes and it's just like, you know, it's like you're doing like deck to deck. So you're like, you're, you're queuing up this one tape, you know, and it, it depends on what kind of tape it is, but it could be like, if it was a VHS tape or a, or a eight millimeter tape, it could be a two hour long tape, you know, and you might say, oh, I want to start with this clip, but it's like at the end of the tape, and you got to fast forward, and you got to wait five minutes till you're all the way at the end of the tape, and you find that clip, then you dub it over to the, you know, your master, and then if the next clip you want to use is one of the beginning of the tape, you gotta rewind it all the way to the beginning of the tape. And it's just, it's just very time consuming, yeah. And you had to like have really good notes. You had to know where the clips were at on these tapes. And it's like, they're big tapes, you know. It's not like these digital files and you just all have them at your fingertips. And it's like... You really had to plan. Yeah, you had to plan. Which is kind of crazy how things have like switched in the 
editing side of things where now you can just do anything and mix and match and see how you like things, but before it had to be deliberate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you, you know, you made a few cuts, you know, you're a minute or two minutes in on an edit, you can't go, oh, I want to change the first clip because you, you couldn't do that. You'd have to start all over again. So yeah, it was, it was very like, okay, you had to be like sound and what you were going to put on the tape in the next order. You're like, okay, this is where it's going. And like, you know, and you're not, you're not really like lining stuff up. It's just so it's, it's, it was a challenge to actually time stuff up so you could line it to the music. It's not like now you're in the timeline and you scoot the clip over five frames so it matches to like a cymbal a hit or a drum hit or whatever, you know? I think there's a certain beauty to the fact that you can't go back yeah. easily. It makes yeah. it m even more art in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, it just, it ends up being, it is what it is and you're not like, you don't sit there and like, yeah, toil over it for a day. You know, nowadays you can be finished with an edit and you'll sit there and look at it for a week. Oh, is this really how I like it? You know, and you play around with a whole bunch of stuff, but then you're like, okay, this is the way it's going to be. And you just didn't, you didn't lose any sleep over it. You just did it and right. be done with it when it was done, you know? Right. So you've done a lot of big projects in BMX, some pretty influential and important stuff. Like how does it feel when like to do those things and see how people react even today to some of the like monumental stuff that has come out that you've had a hand in. It's, I don't know, I mean, it feels good to know that someone watched something and they drew some kind of motivation or inspiration from it, you know, cause that's basically, that's, you know, why I kind of got into doing videos. It's like, we all get inspired by something else, you know, previously. And then you put whatever you make out into the world, you know, you work on a project with these other people. So it's like a collaborative effort, you know? So it's like, everyone has a, plays a part in making something that, you know, to someone else might be memorable or inspirational. But yeah, it feels good to know, you know, you're like, okay, good, I, that wasn't like a waste of time, you know, like, I mean, it's not a waste, it's never a waste of time when you're out filming with friends and working on a project that you, uh, you know, with working with people you enjoy. But um, right. it's good to know that people like it, you know. Yeah, so is there anything coming? You don't have to say what, but are you like working on anything right now? Yeah, we have a couple, uh, a few pieces actually. I just went on like a, an S&M trip with a bunch of the trail dudes, Clint Reynolds and, and guys, so that'll be coming out. Uh, before too long working on like a julian molina documentary for gt that i mean it's not going to be done anytime real soon but that's in the pipeline and then i don't know if i'm allowed to talk about it or not but i'm doing like a piece like a kind of like a documentary i'll also. find out and i'll bleep out the okay. name if you're not <laughs> and that'll be even more funny okay <laughs> but yeah those are those are the few immediate ones so that's really cool well is there? I feel like we've had a really good conversation here and, and covered a lot of things. So I just want to say thank you for okay, talking yeah, to me. You're very welcome. And uh, you've no doubt seen something that Stu has done. And if you haven't, search it out and you'll see that you've seen something Stu has done. So check it out online and uh, thank you again. Yeah, anytime. Appreciate it.